Okay, let me see. Okay. All right. Pavel, thanks a lot for joining me and welcome back to Newcastle. How excited are you to be launching your autobiography? Uh, really excited about it because obviously it's something, you know, uh, you think about it. Uh, actually, I've been thinking about it a long, long time because about maybe 15 years, 20 years ago, I was thinking straight when I finished the, the playing football, do something like this, you know, but uh, it didn't come off the ground. And then uh, obviously uh, last year, uh, I met uh, Billy and obviously with Steve Wright and uh, who look after me here in Newcastle. We, we were sit down and thinking, what if I'm going to do the book? So, uh, beginning I wasn't very sure, but now I'm really excited. And let's face it, you played during one of the most iconic periods of Newcastle's history, so you've got lots of stories to tell. Yeah, I hope uh, I, I told the story like, you know, like I felt, like, you know, experience and... Uh, you know, I hope everybody enjoy that. Uh, I know it's it's quite long long time ago, but uh, still, you know, I hope uh, the memory is there, so everybody will maybe with the book, people will thinking about the good times. The title is an obvious one. It was the T-shirt you wore when they got promoted into the well, the Premier League as it is now. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that day when you you put this T-shirt on? And I think it was Lee Clark's idea, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Actually, Lee Clark's uh, come in you know, come into dressing room and says to me, Puff, after the game, this is the T-shirt you, you put it on. But actually, when he gave it to me first time, I didn't open it, so I just put it on a, on a seat and I, you know, went play the game. And I didn't know what is it on that T-shirt. So, and then when I when I came back after the game, Lee said to me, Puff, get that shirt on. So I put that on and obviously I've seen what was in, you know, because all the stadium all is shout to Pavel is So, and uh, that was, the, you know, but that time I really didn't know this is would be the, you know, big deal of it or this is what you know the make me that's how everybody knows me here you know so and that's how the book called Pavel Zajori. And the fact that you know Pavel Zajori was taken on by the fans and they and they sung it in the stadium just shows their appreciation for you and the fact that no matter where you're from if if, if they like you here then you'll be accepted and, and you can enjoy a good time. Yeah and uh, you know I have to say especially here in North East you know um, the people are you know probably a little bit different on the football wise you know like the fans I think not because I've been here but uh, you know I think that's the best fans you know you know you know maybe whole whole the world you know because obviously I didn't have much experience with rest of the 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 world and the clubs you know but what I experienced here was fantastic I spoke to Rob Elliott about that recently because he's from London, so not from the area, but he says he'll probably stay here after he's finished playing. His son was born here. He's really bought into it. And obviously, as a fellow goalkeeper, you can probably uh, reason with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I really understand because that was actually my attention beginning as well, you know. Stays here and uh, if things ended the career went well for me, I probably will be here till now, you know. But unfortunately, it didn't, things didn't work out for me. So, you know, I, I went back to Czech Republic, but because you know it's just still you know the the, the touch and everything with the region and the, and the people here so that's why i come in here every year what did you enjoy most about playing for newcastle united um you know uh obviously you love the game so that's the first things you know and first you love the game you want to play for the best clubs best you know whatever you could get and then obviously that's you don't think you play for man united for this but uh, the second part of it is the fans and everything, you know, and the atmosphere. And uh, that's what I experienced here so many times on, on that field when we finish the game and uh, when you make the saves, you know, when you uh, also when you made a mistake, the reaction of the people, you could see how the things change and how the people change with their reaction. And I think that's that's, you know, why that's I love about this. It's the fans. You know. Did Kevin Keegan, was he the single most sort of inspirational person you, you work for? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Kevin Kevin is special personality and, uh, you know, um, he he put that club together with uh, Sir John Hall and, uh, you know, the people behind him. That's that's how this club become known well in around the world that time because I think uh, this is, wasn't only in England, but I think all the world know what is Newcastle United that time because Everybody's saying we play the best football in Europe that time, you know. And then, uh, obviously, this is this is everything where the things start. That's what Kevin did over the five years he's been manager. 
even as a goalkeeper, you appreciated him because, of course, his philosophy was more based on attack, wasn't it? Yeah, but look, you know, I said that, you know, so many times I played the sweeper, sometimes I paid for it because I was too far of, of the line of, of the 18 yard box, you know, because he, he wants the goalkeeper to play that position. And, uh, you know, I don't think so did do me any harm because I didn't have a problem play with my feet, you know. So obviously, sometimes I get paid for it because, you know, you out too far and then, you know, you get caught. And uh, But most of the time was everything OK. So, but like you said, his philosophy was always, you know, we score more than we concede, you know. When he left, how did that feel? Um, when he left, I have to say uh, everything was a little bit sour, you know, like uh, because um, before the end, he, he was here, you know, when when he lost his head and everything around, you know, in that interview against Leeds. And it uh, um, was sad for the club because, you know, you're losing a person like Kevin Keegan. is always sad because, you know, he's, he's going away. You don't know who came and people who came after wasn't wasn't the best, you know, I think for the club. And uh, obviously you later on when you, th you see all of these things happening, so you're thinking this was probably best manager and best part we had here. He came back for a second spell, as did you, of course, uh, just for a brief time back in 2006. That was your last appearance against Bolton. You man managed over 150 appearances for Newcastle, something I'm sure you're very proud of. Yeah, uh, look, uh, you know, all the, uh, you know, I'm a little bit sad about it. I didn't make more, but sometimes you know, life life is like this, and uh, and then uh, you know, but even those um, 150 appearance, you know, you think of all of them because the, there was great pleasure for me, you know, and uh, obviously with the team we had, the manager and everything. But like I said uh, before, there wasn't only about the club; it was a whole city. We, we we like every single Newcastle person was like Newcastle United, you know, it's fantastic. How do you assess and I guess compare the club as you left it to the club now? Um, look, it's uh, difficult to compare, you know, because uh, that time we had only 36,000 people in it. Later on they built it a bit, little bit bigger. Then it's over the 50 and um, uh, we had different chairman, different things, you know. I don't know because it's nearly 20 years now. I don't know if, if, if it's right to you know, compare those two times. Uh, but, you know, obviously we never really struggled be bottom three or anything like this when we went to Premier League. We always been minimum top six, you know. We was top three, top two, you know. And uh, it, it's a sad, obviously, because it's a sad for the fans and for everybody involved. And uh, But uh, I hope, and last couple of great results, you know. Um, I know Steve McLaren had a lot of criticism, but maybe last couple of performance, you know, he probably gets credit for that. And uh, and then hopefully things will continue and get better. Yeah, it seems strange, doesn't it, when you played in such a great era and you now see the team quite regularly, actually. It's not just this season, is it? Battling against relegation. It, does everyone now have to sort of revise their targets for Newcastle? Are they a lower mid-table team now, year in, year out? Um, I hope not. Um, because, but uh, you know, to be honest, and uh, you know, you have to say the the Premier League is really tough, tough uh, competition. You know, uh, really, you know, you, you have five, five or six teams. We could say Liverpool, Arsenal, Manchester United, Man City. All of them, you know, you you would love to be with them, but it's a four team already. So you you're looking for the fifth place or sixth place or something. So, but it's really tough competition. But I think Newcastle should be somewhere between them. But like I said before, Kevin, when he came here, he had this great uh, feeling for the players. That's why, you know, he brought the Ginola, uh, Rob Lee, Andy Cole, all of those players who was that time top people in the country. But nobody knows about them before, like, you know, so he, he chose the players. He, he put all of the team together. And then uh, probably that's what Newcastle needed now as well. You know, manager who's going to choose his players. Obviously, chairman back back at the Newcastle with a 50 million this year. So hopefully, you're going to put some more money in, and uh, and the manager going to pick right players, and hopefully Newcastle will come in back where they deserve. You mentioned that they've obviously picked up the last two results, fantastic results actually against Liverpool and Tottenham. Rob Elliott was man of the match yesterday. I know you have said that Newcastle should possibly look for another goalkeeper in January, but 
does his sort of man of the match display kind of change that? No, but uh, I said that uh, Newcastle should look for another goalkeeper because I think they need three goalkeepers, which is good play. Like, you know, you say, if you wake me in the, in the middle of the night, I'm ready to play Premier League. That's what I meant. I didn't meant change the Elliot, not because he, he was man of the match, but, uh, but uh, of the competition. And, you know, you don't know what happened. He was struggling as well, I think. You know, he, he played with the injury against Bormos or someone. And you know, people thinking, who are we gonna put? They have this uh, Woodman, young lad, promising, but he's already, you know, ready for Premier League or something. You know, so that's what I meant. I meant Newcastle should have three very strong, very good goalkeepers who anybody could play any day in the Premier League. That that was my point. And you obviously, obviously a bit. Do you want to, yeah, if yeah. you want that, you know, do it again. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. Sound was a bit loud. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll just repeat that. Sorry. So Rob Elliott, obviously, man of the match, man of the match performance yesterday. But you've said about getting another goalkeeper in, but it doesn't necessarily mean as a replacement for him. No, no, no. I didn't mean replace for for Elliott. But what I meant, Newcastle club like the Newcastle United should have three very good goalkeepers. So if you if you ask them any time of the day, night, you know, you're gonna play Premier League. They should be good enough and ready to play Premier League. So this is was my point, not because like people saying, oh, Tim Krull is injured, uh, we are struggling with the goalkeeper. Shouldn't shouldn't happen in Newcastle. That's what I meant. You know, maybe could happen in the smaller clubs in the Premier League, but shouldn't happen in Newcastle if you want to compare with the top clubs in the country. And you can understand why Rob has taken Newcastle to his heart. And can you see something in how the fans have sort of responded to him and, you know, Pavel is a Geordie, that sort of connection where you don't have to be from here, but the, the fans can take to you. Yeah, because look, I experienced this, you know, and uh, obviously he's English, I'm not, but, you know, that's maybe because I'm too far away. It, and uh, I, I know exactly how we feel probably now, because with every each performance he he's going to put it in, the fans will more and more love it. And especially like when he has performance like yesterday, you know, last night. So this is great for him and I'm pleased, especially because he's a goalkeeper. You know, I know if nice is a player as well, but with the goalkeepers, it's a different thing. And you still obviously watch goalkeepers very closely and you still coach goalkeepers, don't you? Yeah, I'll, I'll coach goalkeepers in Sparta Prague. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, the Sparta Prague is the best club in, in Czech Republic. So I'm happy I'm there now at the moment. And, uh, you know, because you're always looking for the, you know, play or award for the best. So that's that's where I am at the moment and I'm happy. You know what the inevitable next question is, though? Will you ever come back? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I will. <laughs> you know, if if is uh, if it should be the short answer, I would say yes. Um, but obviously, um, you know, you, this is probably have to have the the road how you how you will come in back or not. You know, but like I said, uh, at the moment, I'm with the best club in in the country, and uh, I'm really happy there. So, but you never know what happened tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow will things change, and uh, you know, I might move. Who knows? Thank you very much. Thank you. Best of luck.